It's time to rank every single mainline Five Nights at Freddy's game from worst to best. This list is based on my own opinion and won't include the Freddy and Space games or Fury's Rage. So anyways, I won't waste your time any further, let's get to it. Right at the bottom of the list is a game that's so bad, the developers of the game removed this game from the world. AR is just the bad mobile game that Final Fantasy Freddy's decided to make. I know that this game has its fans and has all its quirks, but if I'm being completely honest, I just don't have that much to say about it. I've played this game once and I absolutely hated it. This game is not fun. The concept is honestly dumb and I know there's some lore, but come on, it's a mobile Final Fantasy Freddy's game for kids. Not to mention, it's home to some of the worst official characters the series has to offer. Like what in the god of name is the curse? Literally a 0 out of 10. You may be shocked to see this game where it is considering my review of Final Fantasy Freddy's 2, but after playing all the games again for this video, I have to say my thoughts have changed quite a bit. Since the location was just a miserable experience from beginning to end. For starters, a big problem that this game has is its lack of replayability. This game is a one-time experience with scripted events and structured gameplay that pulls you along in a set pattern, in a set time. The game revolves around dialogue and a story, oh, and as a result, most of this game is just waiting to be able to do something. And as a result, you are just super bored half the game, doing absolutely nothing. The mini games that you can play are honestly super boring. You click on some buttons and press shift. While the games has some of the best jump scares in the series, the difficulty of this game makes it that so getting jump scared just loses its impact after a while. There's not much connection with the characters because you're more focused on how boring everything is. The Funtime Freddy section is just way too long and just overstays its welcome. The Funtime Foxy game just feels random and the game doesn't explain the concept very well. The parts and service sections feel finicky and it's just not super fun to complete. And oh my god, do not even get me started on the monstrosity that is Night 4. The difficulty curve in this game is just insane with this night. And while I know that there are ways to beat this night consistently, it's not something everyone can grasp. And the lack of visual feedback is detrimental on this night. Not to mention that this night has the worst jump scare, so it's not even scary. This game has terrible pacing, terrible gameplay, and overall, it's just a bad time. Well, except for Ended Night and the Custom Night. Those nights are fun, but the requirement to unlock them is just so frustrating that most people wouldn't even want to work towards it. I mean, if I'm being honest, there's just not much more I can say on this game. I generally think that this game just isn't even worth talking about. It's just so terrible. Also, this game introduced a remnant. Jesus Christ. 1 out of 10. I know that this game is technically a DLC, but that doesn't excuse this game for being absolutely boring as f And I know that Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 isn't here yet, but don't worry, we'll get to it soon. So Ruin was Steel Wool's attempt to fix Security Breach and make it scary, while improving the gameplay and fixing all of the glitches. And in the process, made an absolutely boring walking simulator that absolutely has no danger and no fun elements whatsoever. The whole game consists of you walking around with the mask on, scanning nodes until the bunny appears, then taking off the mask for 30 seconds just waiting to put it back on. This pads the runtime more than even sister location, but at least the locations of Ruin are more interesting, and at least Ruin has some interesting sections, mainly the Phaser Blast section. The plot is extremely flawed, and don't even get me started on the Mimic. This game in my mind pushed things way too far off what the technology of this universe was capable of and gave way too much character to the animatronics. While this existed in Security Breach, which is a problem I will share with that game as well, that doesn't excuse the fact that this game tries to give all their characters an arc, specifically with Roxy, which I just find ridiculous. In terms of horror, this game is scarier than Security Breach the first time you play it, and then it goes back to just being not as scary if not worse than Security Breach. This game failed on so many levels, and while it's not the worst experience Final Fantasy Freddy's has to offer, it is sure up there with just being a drag to play. Uninteresting gameplay and a super long runtime for a DLC, this game just doesn't hit the mark. 3 out of 10. And here we are, the game you all expected to be at the bottom. While I still dislike Final Fantasy Freddy's 2, and I think it is given way too much credit for what it is, I won't deny that the experience is at least tolerable compared to the previous game mentioned. This game doesn't make me angry or want to stop playing. Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 for me is just simply really boring. 
I go more in depth as to why I don't like this game in this video here, but the only difference is that I don't think that this is the worst anymore. And that's simply because as much as I don't feel anything while playing this game, on the play playthrough, this game does have its quirks. I view this game as being a massive missed opportunity rather than a super terrible game. There is a way to salvage this game, and it has been on multiple occasions through various fan games. Final Freddy's 2, in my mind, just fails with its main mechanics and doesn't make them fun or interesting to use. Out of the 11 characters in this game, only two of them are dealt in different ways, that being Foxy with the flashlight and the puppet with the music box. Otherwise, every single character behaves in the exact same way. The cameras are effectively useless, which doesn't allow you to get immersed in the environment, the gameplay throws way too much at you so you don't get scared, and the gameplay is so repetitive that the only way you can die is if Toy Bonnie shows up at the right vent and camps there for 17 seconds. This game just isn't fun and it is more of a rhythm game than anything. However, this game does introduce some staple characters and most of them have great designs and are at least interesting enough to keep the viewer from clicking off. While this game is far from perfect, it at least introduced some great lore elements. This game gets a 4 out of 10. If I'm being completely honest, I feel no one is going to agree with me here, but regardless, I just don't really vibe with Pizzeria Simulator. Don't get me wrong, in terms of lore, it's fantastic. Well, most of the time. But the Tycoon section is an absolute blast, and finding all of the hidden lore elements is just super cool and interesting. The gameplay is fun and charming, and customizing the pizzeria is such a fun experience. Plus, this game introduced the number one crate. You've gotta love it. Now that being said, the office sections and salvage sections are quite lacking in comparison. The salvage sections have less to do, but I believe that they are more effective than the office section. You have to make sure the animatronic doesn't kill you by shocking them if they get too aggressive, but you can't shock them too much or they'll have no value. This section is tense and the jump scares in this section do get you. However, when we turn our attention to the office gameplay, we see the main problem with this game. The office section is the closest to the original game, and while it does feature some cool elements with the night length being determined by how fast you can play everything, and how scary it actually is, overall it's actually quite boring and just more annoying rather than scary. Not to mention the jump scares are complete ass. The ending of this game is obviously a massive highlight and easily one of the best endings of any Final Fantasy Freddy's game to be sure. However, that doesn't excuse the fact that the game that it's attached to is honestly just kind of mid. And while it has its charm and quirks, overall it's just not for me. But I'll give the game a 5 out of 10. Final Fantasy Freddy's World is probably one of the most charming games on this list, and while it's definitely not your traditional Final Fantasy Freddy's game by any means, it is quite a lot of fun. The battles are engaging and exciting, the environments are bright and colourful, the gameplay is addicting and challenging, and the music is just fantastic. So why is this game so low on the list? Well, truth be told, this game revolves around finding secrets in the map in order to progress. With that being said, trying to navigate around this area is quite a challenge, as locating random glitch objects or trying to locate a chip in the code is just tedious. And considering how much this game was just throwing battles at you left, right and centre, it can just become a super frustrating experience to play through. This may just be a skill issue on my part, but I just have no idea why I'm going half the time, and even after watching people play it over and over again, I just can never figure it out. It's really not fun having to crack all these cryptic puzzles, but even still, this game is at least fun, and I guess that's really what this game was going for. It's charm and ability to keep a viewer entertained. Considering this game had to be made free, it kind of shows how little this game has to offer. Sure, it's a fun time, but it's nothing super special. 5 out of 10. The most recent game to release at the time of this recording, and I gotta say, this game was sure interesting. Now right off the bat, I should say that VR is not my favourite thing on the planet, so that might make my review of this game just a tad biased. That being said, I think that this is a super good VR game. All the levels are fun and engaging, and most of the carnival games feel smooth and are quite enjoyable to play. The game does feature some interesting levels and some awesome recreations as well as well as some brand new levels that are quite fun to play through. This game does have a few problems however. For starters, this game isn't scary at all, which is something that the original Help Wanted did so well. Not only that, but this game seems to focus just a little too much on Security Breach and its characters, rather than exploring some of the characters from the previous games. There's no mention of any of the previous games except this location and I suppose one level which is dedicated to Pizza Sim, but otherwise it's more just Security Breach. 
And I, look, I get that it's still Wall's baby, so it makes sense, but I feel like they missed out on some great opportunities in favour of these stale minigames. For example, a FNAF Wild section or UCN section would have been quite sick, or an actual recreation of the Pizza Sim office level. Maybe even the salvage section. I feel that this game just missed out on so much, but for everything that it has, it is definitely not a terrible experience by any means. The game is fun, but it just doesn't quite feel like a FNAF game or even a horror game. It kind of feels like the Wii Party games of Fire to Freddy's, which is just weird. Overall, while this game is definitely not perfect, it's still way more fun than the previous games mentioned. Overall, I give it a 6 or 7 out of 10. Okay, pause. I know I just said that Help Wanted 2 was bad because of Security Bridge, and yet this game is above it. So let's explain why I like this game so much. Obviously, this game is absolutely broken from every conceivable angle. It's absolutely terrible how easy this game is to break. Considering on launch day people were getting soft locked and all that terrible stuff just for trying to play the game as intended, this game is surely the worst in the series. Well, for some it is, and to be honest, I even hated it when I first played it. The map is useless and it's so easy to just run around for 10 hours not sure where you're meant to go. However, despite all of that, on replay playthroughs and learning the right way to play this game, treating it like a sandbox, this game becomes a hilarious experience where you just end up loving all the quirks and look. Say what you want, but this game has a ton of charm. Sure, some of that charm might be for the wrong reasons, but it's still there. I love Freddy so much and I think he's hilarious. I love Roxy and how insecure she is, Chica and her ability to just not really understand how things work, and Monty is just such a vibe. Now, that being said, I do think the animatronics do have way too much personality. They just don't seem like robots anymore, more like metal humans, which is just bizarre. But besides that, I really like this game and its charm. There's a lot to do, and some of the tasks are actually quite fun to complete. While the checkpoint system is a bit ass overall, definitely not as bad as this location checkpoint system, god damn it. Overall, I definitely had way more fun with this game than not. And there's only a couple of sections of this game that I actually don't like. I'm looking at you, Mazer Size. Otherwise, I think it's a ton of fun. It's still a broken game, but a ton of fun. I give it a 7 out of 10. Alright, so we're jumping quite a bit in quality when it comes to this compared to the last game. I am including the Jade Bear DLC with this one because it flows a lot closer with this game than, say, Ruins or the Security Bridge. Both experiences are about the same in quality, so without further ado, let's talk about Help Wanted. Right off the bat, I much prefer the horror focus of this one compared to Help Wanted 2. The idea of recreating the original games in a VR experience was way more interesting to me than just being a fast technician training or something along those lines. The actual experience of sitting in the offices of the original games is actually terrifying, especially the Final Fantasy 1 and 2 locations. Parts and service has to be one of the highlights, as well as the vent repair. This game focused a lot more on the horror side when it came to its gameplay, which did make some parts of the games easy, but at the same time, the whole point is getting you scared as a little baby while playing this game. This game probably focuses more on horror than anything else, with pretty much every game mechanic designed to scare you. Now, not every minigame lands, obviously. The plush babies in particular and the night terror sections not always working the way you want them to, but at the same time, I think it's a minor inconvenience. Even the Dreadbear DLC focuses around horror, although some of its minigames do feel like how it wanted to. But at the same time, it's not too bad. Now this game has gotten a lot of praise from me, so is there anything I don't like? Well, truth be told, the lore of this game is a bit up in the air, but at the same time, it's not always the focus, and I don't really care about the lore of this game enough. More the gameplay and experience. I will also admit that the horror of this game does lose its impact on replay playthroughs, but that's with any horror game to be fair. Also, again, I don't really like VR, but again, I can't fault the game for that, considering how terrible the flat mode is. I think that for Steel Wall's first game, this was a phenomenal experience, and it does a lot of things right for sure. Sure, it has some of its quirks, but that won't stop me from giving it a 9 out of 10. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 is extremely underrated in my opinion, and while I talked about this in my last video, I will go over the reasons as to why I love this game. For starters, I love the atmosphere of this place, and the environment is super creative. The gameplay of this game is actually one of the highlights for me. I know not everyone agrees with me, but the tug of war with Springtrap has to be one of my favourite experiences in Final Fantasy Freddy's. Speaking of which, this game introduces Springtrap, who has to be one of the best characters in the Final Fantasy Freddy series. That alone warrants this game being higher on the list. However, more about the game itself. The experience with the post night cutscenes is super fascinating, the phantoms provide good variety of the gameplay, and the lore revealed and explored in this game is super cool and well thought out. 
I love the phone calls and the training tapes. The tapes don't help you at all with the game, but they provide some really fascinating lore. The game of Springtrap having to lure him with the audio lure while keeping track of all the different functions that you need to stay alive is super cool as well. The maintenance panel is a super cool mechanic, and while it's definitely a bit slow, I won't deny that it serves its use. This game is also quite tense and spooky compared to some of the others, and while it's definitely not the scariest, it's definitely up there. Now that being said, I do understand that some people don't like this game, but if I'm being completely honest, the only thing that I don't like about this game is the jump scares, which are pretty bad. And also, before I get 100 comments telling me why Springtrap's jump scare is amazing, let me quickly explain why it's not. You see, a jump scare is a sudden scare, with visuals and sound taking more of a focus than context and dread. So the argument that is saying that this jump scare is good because Springtrap is a human and he acts more human and that's scary makes no sense because it does not detract from the fact that this isn't an effective jump scare. Anyways, sorry for my little tangent. One more thing I want to mention is that Final Fantasy Freddy's 3 has my favourite ending. I think the good ending in Final Fantasy Freddy's 3 is the best one, no questions asked, and it did a way better job than Connection Terminator at ending things in my mind. Maybe why it's in certain video? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, I won't go on more. If you want my full opinion, check out my video on the subject of Final Fantasy Freddy's 3. This game gets a 9 out of 10. The original game is nearly 10 years old and it's still one of the best games in the series by far. This game was honestly perfect, at least for the time. It completely shook the horror game scene for the decade as it pushed indie games into the spotlight. No longer would the top dog of horror games be running away from scary monsters version 952. No, staying still and fending your office is the new trend. Anyways, this game was super popular and for good reason. Even 10 years later, this game holds up super well. The ambience and sound design have been praised to death, and for good reason. This game has probably the best sound design out of all the games, with every sound working in harmony to provide an absolutely terrifying experience. To the buzzing of the fan, to the whirring of the cameras, to Freddy's music box, the animatronic garbling, the thudding footsteps, the pots and pans, and the drone. It all works in harmony to get the player immersed in the experience and get ready for a jump scare. The design of the animatronics is arguably the strongest out of any game, and even 10 years later, this batch of characters is still my favourite, and probably the best design ones. Each character works a little bit differently, and as a result, each character develops a unique connection with the player. Every player has a favourite. Every player has a character that they have beef with. Every player has different strategies for dealing with each character. The lore in this game, while being a lot more simple and more hidden than the, game, the coming games, provides the most freedom for the player to draw their own conclusions, with a ton of easter eggs and hidden features for the player to stumble across if they aren't careful. I mean, Golden Freddy has to be one of the most horrifying characters to appear in a game. Back when this game came out, Golden Freddy was so unheard of that people thought that he was a creepy pastor and that the game might be haunted which of course added to the fear that people had with this game. The gameplay itself was so well built for a horror game, with the player being completely trapped and unable to defend themselves while these big scary animatronics come to try and kill you. Back then too, the animatronics weren't really associated with being possessed, and while there were theories as to what happened to the kids, the animatronics were basically acting as normal robots, and that emptiness, emotionless behaviour of the original crew was honestly horrifying. These weren't possessed machines, these were just robots following their programming, and that was super scary. The whole possession thing and the humanization of the characters kind of ruined the horror. But anyways, the doors, the lights, the cameras, they all work in harmony to make sure that you have to be alert at all times and try your best not to die. The power mechanic has to be one of my favorites of any Final of Freddy's game, as you literally have to worry about it 24-7. Every action you make has a consequence. Make one error and it could end your night. One more personal thing that I love about this game is Freddy. I love how he's the star of the show. He's more intelligent than the others. He is smarter. He is more terrifying. He doesn't back off. He will kill you. They made Freddy the star of the show and the final boss of this game, which none of the other games have done. And I really wish they took the Final Fantasy Freddy's 1 approach and made Freddy the hardest character to deal with again in the other games. Now the only thing about this game that I don't think has aged really well has to be the night length. Clocking in at nearly 9 minutes long, these nights definitely overstay their welcome and make the game a bit of a slog to play on repeat playthroughs. However, even still, this game hits the mark in every other way, and not many games have managed to top what the original game has brought to the table. This gets a 9.5 out of 10. 
UCN may not be the best Fire to Freddy's game that has ever been made, but to be honest, this is probably my absolute favourite Fire to Freddy's game at all time. This game isn't a masterpiece by any means, but it is the game that I've had the most fun with and easily the game that I've had the most hours in. UCN has its fair share of problems, but in the context of the game that it's trying to be, it matters little that the jump scares in this game are not up to par. This game is a strategy and skill based experience more than a horror game, and while this does prevent it from being a super scary and masterful experience in terms of a horror game, it is a fantastic experience for those who want to push themselves with optimised gameplay and see just how far they can take a game like Ultimate Custom Night. With over 50 different characters to choose from, all with different mechanics requiring the player to react accordingly, the player has a large amount of options with how they can choose to approach this game. If you want to just take on one character in a 1v1, you can. If you want to make a challenge after dealing with a couple of the most extreme characters in this game, you can. If you want to push yourself and take on every character at max difficulty, you can. The options in this game are limitless, and with the inclusion of 16 set challenges, Ultimate Custom Art effectively teaches you how to play it properly without requiring a tutorial or having to explain everything besides the controls. Every character is also balanced extremely well, and the learning curve for this game is expertly designed. Every challenge feels satisfying to beat, and every character feels satisfying to deal with. While not every character is created equally, and there are definitely some weird inconsistencies with some of the characters that were added versus the characters that we don't see in this game, I see this more of an opportunity for a sequel to be released rather than a detriment for this game. Overall, this game is a ton of fun, and the game that I still casually play on my free time. I want to make a video talking about how much I love this game in more detail, so if you're interested, let me know in the comments. This game may not be everyone's favourite, but at least for me, it's got to be a 9.5 out of 10 for me. However, one game remains, and I believe that it not only is the best Fire to Freddy's game of the bunch, but a work of art and one of the best horror games I've ever played. While Fire to Freddy's 1 shook the horror scene and changed how horror games were made, Fire Nights at Freddy's 4 pushed it to the limit and showed us just how far we could push the horror for these types of games. Everything in this game is designed to enhance the horror and terrify the player. And I do mean everything. Every sound, every visual, the minigames, the cutscenes, the story, the ambience and the gameplay. Everything is terrifying. The main gameplay loop is designed in such a way that no matter what you do, you could get jump scared. Everywhere you look is dangerous, and if you don't act accordingly, you are met with a terrifying jump scare. All the characters in this game are horrifying, and every character again has a personal connection to the player. In my mind, this game is a much more thought out and expertly optimised version of Final Fantasy Freddy's 1, with each character needing to be dealt individually, with no downtime to allow the horror to fade. This game does not overwhelm you like in Final Fantasy Freddy's 2, nor does it not underwhelm you like in this location. It does everything perfectly, and then some. This game is fun, engaging, and extremely terrifying, and while I do understand that some people don't like this game, I absolutely love it to death. And while I won't go on too much more, I do want to talk about everything that I do love with this game in a future video, because this game deserves all the praise that it can get. It's not perfect, but it provides a perfect experience in my mind, and for that alone, I believe that this game deserves a 10 out of 10 score. Well, there we are. Every single mainline part of Freddy's game ranked from worst to best. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Do it now. Anyways, have a great day and I will see you in the next video.